This is the first part of the empirical formula lab. What we're doing is we're getting a crucible, and this crucible is in good shape. There's no holes or anything in the bottom of it. And what I'm going to do first is weigh this crucible empty. Notice I'm going to weigh it without the lid. I'm weighing it on an analytical balance, which means I'm weighing it to 0 0.0001 grams. The next part of the lab will involve adding the copper chloride sample to our the copper chloride sample to our crucible. Now we're doing this over here on the lab bench and not near the balance. This has just been weighed on the analytical balance, but what we want to do is make sure that this is added while it's off the balance. So we go back to our station and we will add the copper chloride to the crucible at this point. Now this sample is close to a gram, it may not be exactly a gram, but it's going to be close to a gram. I'm going to add it to the crucible. Don't worry about the residue, because we haven't weighed it yet. Once we weigh it, we'll be able to take account of that, but it won't matter that we never added it. Now I want to show you what the sample looks like in the crucible and you can see that it is a little lumpy so what we're doing is just going in here with the spatula and just breaking apart any lumps that we might see here this will help with the reaction and make sure that it all gets dehydrated once we start heating it and again don't worry about any that might be left on the spatula the reason we're not worried about that is again we haven't weighed it yet Alright, so we've put our copper chloride into the crucible, and you can see it's in there. And what we're going to do now is we're going to weigh it again. Obviously, the difference between the empty crucible and this will be the amount of copper chloride hydrate that we've added. This will be weighed to four decimal places, 0 0.0001 grams. get the water away from it. So we're going to use a Bunsen burner. I'll light the Bunsen burner first. And the kind of flame we're looking for is a blue flame, and this one's not too bad. It looks to be about four to five centimeters high, so about this high, it's about two inches. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this flame and we're going to gently run it underneath here. Now we don't want it completely on the flame, so about four inches away, and I'm just going to continually do this. We do not want to overheat this, because what can happen is that the copper chloride hydrate can turn into copper oxide, and that's not what we want. So now what I'm showing you is what the crucible looks like as we're heating it. As you can see, there's already a little bit of brown forming here. That's the copper chloride with the water removed from it. So what I'm going to do now is continue to heat it, and you can see the overall effect of what's going to happen with the copper chloride hydrate. Notice how it becomes a little bit more brown as time goes on. And I'm just very gently rocking the flame underneath the copper chloride hydrate sample. You can notice the progression as it ch changes from a green to a brown color. We do not want it to go black. If it goes black, that's a problem. Brown is fine, that's what we want. Now I can't get in there with a spatula and mix it around. Unfortunately, what the, what's going to happen is I'm going to lose a bunch, probably. But you can see the progression here.
Here we go, nice brown crystals. Now it's looking pretty good, but I still want to make sure that all of those crystals in there have turned have turned to brown. Uh, and I want to get this right the first time. The last thing I want to do is cool this down, look at it, sort of roll it around and find out I've still got a bunch of green crystals in there. So I want to make sure I heat it enough, but not too much. As you can see, I haven't been heating this for a whole lot of time. And what I'm going to do now, it's sort of turned brown, I'm going to continue to do this for another couple of minutes. And that will be something that I'll turn this off now and uh, I will allow that to occur. Right, at this point I've finished heating it. It's uh, brown on the inside, just like I showed you in the last shot. And it's been cooling for a bit. Now I'm going to put it on here to cool. And now I can put the lid on it. And I'm going to let it cool for 15 minutes. So I've got my copper chloride sample here. It's been dehydrated. It's been sitting for 15 minutes. Now it's cool. And now I'm going to go ahead and weigh it. So we've got our cooled copper chloride hydrate sample here, as you can see it's brown. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer it into a beaker using some water. So I'm going to add some water to the crucible here. And then I'll pour it in. You can see we've got this nice greenish solution. Now I'm going to continue to add water to this to transfer it all in, make sure that there's nothing left inside the crucible. There's still a little bit left in here, so I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more water. I think it's okay really to probably have about 30 mils of solution in here. I won't do any more than that. As you can see, I've pretty much I'll just do a little bit more here. There we go. Transfer any remaining residue that might be in there into the to the beaker. And you can see I've got a nice, nice greenish, bluish type solution here. What I'm going to do next, I'm going to raise this a little bit up to you know, 30 mils or so. And I'm going to add this aluminum wire, as you can see what I'm doing is I'm just putting it into a, a fairly loose spiral type situation and I'm going to stick it into the solution and what's going to happen is copper is going to end up depositing on this wire. And this is going to take probably about 30 minutes or so and the solution eventually will turn colourless. So the solution has been sitting here for a few minutes and what I want you to see is that we've got copper depositing on the aluminum that we put into the solution. Now it's still not done yet, it's still uh, quite a coloured solution. We're going to wait uh, about 30 minutes total and it will end up being hopefully colourless at the end. Alright, so it's been 30 minutes, the solution has gone pretty much colourless now. I'm going to add 5 drops of 6 molar HCl and that will have the effect of dissolving any aluminum salts that might have formed. Now 
Now what I want to show you here is how easily the copper comes off the aluminum wire. And you can see I'm just using a, a stirring rod here, a glass stirring rod. And you can see how it just sort of flakes off, flakes off the wire. So as you can see, with not too much effort, I've been managed. I've managed here to get the copper off the wire. Now, if, there, if there's any copper that stays on the aluminum wire, you can always add a drop of HCl, and that will end up uh, removing it. But what we've got here is this situation. You can see, you can see all the copper sitting in the bottom of the beaker there. And now we can move on to the next step of filtering it. Here we've got our copper, which we want to filter, and to do that, we're going to use the book in the funnel setup. The book in the funnel has a funnel on top, and in this funnel, I'm going to place a piece of filter paper, and the piece of filter paper has to fit exactly in the funnel. So it goes in there like that. Now the next thing I'm going to do is turn on the vacuum. I'm going to squirt a little bit of water on top. This will create a nice seal, hopefully, with the filter paper. And then I press down, and already you can begin to see water coming down through the, the filter funnel here. Now I've got a nice seal, that's good. Notice how it's clamped. It's really important that this setup be clamped because this is top heavy and can slip over if we don't clamp it. So I'm going to now go ahead and add my copper to the funnel and it's a vacuum setup so it's going to move, remove this very quickly. Now when I'm doing this the best technique is to do swirl and dump. So what I want to do is just swirl this, not pour it in slowly but pour it in quickly and try and get as much solid as I can into the funnel. So there's still a little bit left in the beaker here. So I'm going to add a bit of distilled water, like this, DI water. Give it a bit more of a swirl, and dump it in. A little bit more. It really doesn't matter exactly how much you use. Just as long as you get all the copper out of the beaker. It looks like I've done that. Now I'm going to stop this for a second, I'm going to show you what it looks like on the funnel. And you can see what it looks like. Turn this back on. Make sure I've got a good seal. Then add 15 mils of DI water and then 10, 10 mils of 95% ethanol. I'm going to leave this sit for 5 minutes, then I'm going to transfer it to a weighed watch glass. Right here we have our watch glass, empty watch glass, and we're going to weigh it. So here's our copper, and it's on the it's on the on the funnel here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer this copper to the watch glass. 
So just use a spatula and just go ahead and transfer all the copper you can out of here. Okay. Alright, so that's all of it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this over to the oven and I'm going to stick it in the oven. Alright, so now we've got our copper, it's been dried and I've taken it out of the oven and I've let it cool for a few minutes. It's, not a, it's never a good idea to weigh anything while it's hot. So it's been taken out of the oven, it's been cooled for a bit and now what I'm going to do is weigh it on the balance and that's going to allow us to come up with our mass of copper.